this morning. I trust that all is well. Yes, amen. All is well. Amen. This morning I'm going to talk to you about troubled times. We are living in a day and an age that we have never seen before in this country. And the scriptures, believe it or not, talk to us about it. That's how we know that none of these things have caught Jesus by surprise. You know, and, and that's the awesome thing about God's Word. Just when we think uh, something has snuck up and grabbed us, it hasn't snuck up and grabbed us at all. No. Jesus knew about it. Right. Yeah. Matter of fact, if you have your Bibles with you this morning, I'm going to start in one passage, and there's three different places we're going to go this morning. But in the first place we're going to go is Psalms 121. Now, there's a great scripture. Now, we've come through some tough times. I think that we're, as they say, over the curve. Or the curve has been flattened. <laughs> How do you flatten a curve? This stretches out the road, right? So in, in your Bibles, in Psalms 121, verse 1, is where we're going to head to first. But when we think about the rough times that we've come through this morning, where sickness and death have entered into our homes or some homes, tough economic conditions have discouraged a lot of people today. And... There's no reason to be discouraged. Church attendance has declined. Amen. <laughs> I can say that for a fact. This morning it has declined. Um, but what can we do? How can we change things? Well, in Psalms 121, it says, I will lift up my eyes into the hills from whence my help comes. My help come from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day or the moon by night. The Lord will preserve thee from all evil. He, he shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. Amen. We have just read a song here that expresses assurance and hope in God's protection day and night. Day and night. In other words, God doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber. He's not short. He's, he doesn't grow weary. He doesn't get tired. He's there day and night. Amen. He's not only made the hills, but heaven and earth as well. We should never trust a lesser power than God himself. But not only he has all the power... He also watches over us. Nothing distracts or deters him. We are safe forevermore in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, He's made that clear to us. Yeah. So when we so what when we lift up our eyes, how can we change things? I'm going to share that this morning. We can lift up our eyes for help, as in Psalms 121. When we when we lift up our eyes from where our help comes from. The psalmist was in trouble. He worried day and night. He feared that he was slipping into danger. And see, church, we're living in a day and an age where, where people are, are slipping into danger. They're allowing uh, things that are abnormal to become normal in their lives. Mm. We see in the, in the news and across America that, that alcoholism has risen some 47%. Domestic violence is up over 20%. And we see that, that, that other things that are happening, it, it's just unbelievable. But we serve a God who neither slumbers nor sleeps. He's not distracted by the ways of the devil. He did, he, he decided to look up, the, the psalmist decided to look up. He looked up to his omniscient creator. 
Why did he look at him too as his omnipotent creator? Because my help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Amen. He looked up to his omnipresent Lord. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He keepeth thee. He will not slumber. Behold, he watches over Israel. You see, no matter what's going on in the world, we can know that our God, who is omni, um, omnipotent and is omnipresent, is also a compassionate Savior. Right. He looked up to his compassion and Savior. How do we know that? Because in verses 5 and 6, he says, The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. Oh, thank you. He shall not smite thee day nor by night. He is going to always watch over. He is going to look up to his guiding Savior. The Lord shall preserve thee. Yes. From all evil, not some evil, yes. not a few types of evil, but all evil. We were talking this morning how people are taking their stimulus money and spending it on pornography. Now that is not a good way to spend your money. The Lord Jesus is grieved. But he has a way of preserving you from all evil. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this day and forevermore. He looked up to the Lord to save us. Yeah. Matter of fact, in Isaiah 45, 22, it says, Look unto me, and ye shall be saved in all thy end of the earth. I am, I am God, and there is no one else. God is our Savior. Yes. The Lord is our Savior. He can look up to the Lord, and he knows that the Lord will keep us because he's convinced of that, because, because Hebrew tells us. Mm -hmm. In Hebrews 5 and 6, 13, 5 and 6, let your conversations be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee, so that they may Boldly say that the Lord is my helper, and I will fear not what man can do unto me. You see, when we put our hands in the hands of the Lord, we put our trust in the hands of the Lord, we put our faith in the hands of the Lord, we put everything that we have in the hands of the Lord, He will be our helper. He will be our guiding shield. He will be our protector. He will be our provider. He will be everything that we need because we have chosen to put our help in the hands of the Lord. Yes, right. Amen. How else can we change things? We can lift up our eyes to the harvest. Jesus himself said in John 4, 35, Say not ye that ye four months, then I come with the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look into the field, for they are white and ready unto harvest. Mm -hmm. We have many, many Christians who today don't live in faith. Who don't believe all that the word of God says is for them. Sometimes Christians excuse themselves from witnessing by saying their family or friends aren't ready to believe in Jesus. However, it makes it clear that around us continually the harvest awaits. It's ready to be reaped. Don't let Jesus find you making excuses Look around you, you will find people who are ready to hear God's word. You see, we're always worried about what people are going to think when we witness to them. Don't worry about what they're going to think. Your only priority, your only job is to witness for Jesus Christ, to present the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is what we're to do. Live let us, let us lift up our eyes and see lost and perishing souls. Our problems are small in contrast to their plight. We know we're heaven bound, amen? amen. But they aren't heaven bound. 
What can be worse than your family, your friends, your loved ones being bound for hell? No wonder why Jesus calls upon us to lift up our eyes. Let's look at the harvest, not our hurts. In doing so, we will solve many of our problems. Reaching people for Christ brings joy to troubled believers. Those who sorrow in tears, what? Reap joy. I don't know about you, but I'm, I am all about wanting to reap joy this morning. I'm all about wanting to do all that I can for, for, for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Reaping turns us from sorrow into singing. Matter of fact, the psalmist tells us in 120, Psalms 126, 6, He that goeth forth reaping, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Jesus has told us what he wants us to do. But yet we still find excuses not to witness for Jesus Christ. Well, you know, Pastor, we can't get out and witness today. You know, we're, we're locked in our homes. We can't go out on the streets. We can't witness to people. We can't go to our favorite hangout places anymore right now. And, and, and so therefore, I don't get to see the people. They have this beautiful technology Call the phone. Amen. Call the phone. We can pick up our phones and we can call people. We can call people we know and we can share with them an encouraging word from the Lord. As a matter of fact, I want to encourage each of you this week when you're when you're when you're in your home, you have your 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 devotional time together. I want to encourage you to call a, a another person and encourage them in the word. And give them a, a, a word of encouragement the Lord has shared with you. There are all kind of people that aren't here this morning. And pick up the phone and call them. Say, hi, how are you doing? Thinking about you today. I was praying and I, you know, I just wanted to call and pray with you. And let you know that the Lord Jesus Christ is still alive and well and still on the throne. Amen. Amen. Yes. How else can we change things. We can lift up our eyes for he is coming. Matter of fact, he tells us in Luke 21 verse 28. And Jesus said, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. Woo! Hallelujah! That means he's coming! Yes. In the last days will be characterized by troubles. Mm -hmm. Jesus tells us in Luke 21, 25 through 26. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations and perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Trouble in nature, earthquakes and storms, troubles in nations, tensions and war. It's almost like we're reading the last times right now. With the amount of fear that is that is stretched across the world and nations, yeah. tensions. People think, man, we're, this is almost like the apocalypse. We got to be in the last days right now. Well, I hate to break it to us, but tough times are ahead for planet Earth. Yes. yes. This isn't even the beginning. I don't believe of the things that are going to come to pass. Yeah. Christians have a message for tough times. Mm -hmm. On our darkest day, God always makes a way. Mm -hmm. And he will make a way for you. Those of you who are watching this morning, I'm telling you, 
God will make a way. It, no matter how bleak things may seem, no matter how terrible things may seem to you this morning, I'm telling you, when you look at the Word of God and you see yes. the love that He has displayed to you from the cross of Calvary, you don't have a worry to worry Amen. about because He draws nigh. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But you know, the promises of God's Word is, is tough times are only temporary. Yes, yes Woo! that's right. Amen. Hallelujah, because we're heaven bound, amen? amen. And I can tell you where you're not going to have troubles. Amen. Where you're not going to have to worry about your bills being paid. Amen. You're not going to have to worry about where your next meal is coming from. I can't wait to get to that back table. Amen. I'm thinking, I don't have to hear from my cardiologist anymore. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> who says, don't eat this yeah, yeah. and don't eat that. I won't have to hear people say, don't, no more sweet tea. I believe Jesus is going to have the sweetest tea you can ever taste this out of heaven. I'm telling you, it's going to be great stuff. Amen. Some say he'll kill the fatted calf. I think he'll kill the fatted pig and give me the biggest slice of crispiest bacon I've ever had in my life. Amen. Amen. Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. There'll be no sickness there, so I don't have to worry about the cholesterol. Right. I won't have to worry about the ticker slipping out of place. That's right. Amen. Jesus is going to come and put all the doctors out of business. Amen. Mm -hmm. Tough times are temporary. Yes, sir. This is true uh, because Christ is going to come. This is true in daily life. All things pass. Matter of fact, what did Peter say to us in 1 Peter 1, 6 and 7? Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through the manifold temptation, that the trial of faith, which being much more precious than gold, that perish, though it be tried by the fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Man, just think of that for a moment when we begin to think about all that Jesus is going to do and how he's going to be poured out upon the earth. The picture of the coming of uh, persecution in, in nature and distress in, in and distress and the gloominess but ultimately it is the the cause not the worry but the great joy when believers see the events happening they will know that the return of the messiah is near and when they look toward his reign of justice and peace rather than being terrified by what is happening in our world, we should be confidently awaiting Christ's return to bring justice and restoration to his people. Yes. You see, we, we worry too much about all the other things that are going on. We should be, we should be concerned about his coming. Yes, yes. Okay. People always ask me, what are we to do? I said, I don't know. I do know this, though. Be ready. Yeah. Be ready. Don't worry about what's going on in the world. Do this. Be ready. Be ready for his appearing. Our tough times have not taken God by surprise. Citizens of heaven should not be looking downward. What did, what did Philippians 3, 20 and 21 tell us? For our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Mm. Hallelujah. We are citizens of heaven. No more, woe is me. What am I going to do now? Oh. Can it get any more bleak? If I have to stay in this house one more day, I'm going to just go crazy. <laughs> if I walk around my yard one more time, that path is going to get deeper and deeper. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, if I watch one more television show, I'm going to go into depression. Turn it off. I'm telling you, when we start singing the praises of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we start worshiping him and in spirit and in truth, the glory of the Lord will shine round about us and he will bring a joy. He will bring a, a newness into your life, a fulfilling of the Holy Ghost into your bodies, and he will bring a joy and a, re, a rejoicing that will take the presence of all the depression and all the sorrow and all of the negativity things that are going around in the world. He will bring you a, a, a spirit of peace yes. and relief. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But church, we have got to be about our Father's business. Yes. Those of you who are watching this, you have got to be about your Father's business. Mm -hmm. Time is short. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Time is short. Mm -hmm. People think they have given all that they can give. People think they're doing all that they can do. But I'm telling you, Jesus gave it all. He gave it all so that we could have it all. The creator of heaven and earth, our Lord Jesus, the one who is soon to return, gives us the opportunity to have joy to have peace. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want us to suffer. He doesn't want us to live in fear. He doesn't want us to live in depression. For I tell you that the Lord Jesus Christ is standing at the right hand of the Father, interceding for each one of us, that He alone will be glorified in these days. People are looking to the government for help. But I tell you what, the Lord Jesus Christ said, the help comes from him. Amen. Him alone is the help come. We can't depend on others. We can only depend upon the Lord. Because when we turn our eyes to him, from where our help comes from, he alone will satisfy every single desire that you have. Mm. I'm so thankful this morning that I serve a risen Savior. Yes. And he's in my life today. Yes. Lord Jesus, I thank you. Mm. I thank you for your word. Mm. I pray, Lord Jesus, for each one in this church this morning. Father, I pray that you will watch over each one of them. Yes, God. Give them safe travel mercies home. I pray for each one watching this morning. I pray, God, let them see that truly the help comes from you. And that, Lord Jesus, you are there with them. Yes. Supplying the joy and the peace and the strength that each one of them need this day. I pray that you will just continue to watch over them. Lord, let them reflect upon the words that you have spoken today. And, Lord Jesus, you renew their strength. You renew their joy. You, Lord Jesus, renew their hope. Mm -hmm. Lord, until we all meet again, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.